Hello and welcome to this second example video of where we can apply second order differential equations in engineering. And again, with this video, I'm going to assume that you've watched our introductory video where we talk about how we can solve second order differential equations. Um, but here we're going to jump straight in. So it's worth watching that first if you haven't done so already. Let's suppose in this example, we have a car suspension and this car suspension acts with a damped oscillation and that damped oscillation is given by this second order differential equation. Um, we have d squared x by dt squared plus 5 dx by dt plus 6x equals 0. And the idea behind a damped oscillation is rather than the previous example where we saw uh, uh, our solution solved as a cosine function that um, oscillates indefinitely. We want an oscillation where an initial displacement will quickly return to an equilibrium point. And we're going to find that that's the case in this particular instance by solving this particular equation for x in terms of time t. So in this differential equation here, we see that we're expressing the displacement x of the car suspension with respect to time t and so we have uh, dx by dt as a velocity the differential of x with respect to time and similarly d squared x by dt squared is an acceleration in this particular model. Let's also suppose that we're told that at time uh, 0 t equals 0 the initial displacement, x, is 0 0.1 meters, and the velocity at that time, dx by dt, is 0 0.15 meters per second. And so we're going to use this information to help us find a particular solution for x. So as with our previous examples, the first thing we're going to do is to draw out the auxiliary equation, and the auxiliary equation is going to look like this, m squared plus 5m plus 6 equals 0. And we can solve this by factorization. Um, factorizing, we'll see something like this. Uh, m plus 2 multiplied by m plus 3 is equal to 0. You could solve by using the quadratic formula as well. But either way, we find that uh, m is either equal to minus 2 or minus 3. So here we have two uh, real numbers as our roots and they are unequal numbers, they're not the same, and so we said in our first video that any um, set of roots for m that are in the form of real unequal numbers, um, the solution has to be written in this form, x equals a, a to the minus 2t, plus b, a to the minus 3t. And this is our general solution, um, but we don't know the value of these two unknown constants, a, and b. And what we must do is substitute some of the initial values we were given at the start in order to start to try and find the values of these unknown constants. So substituting in here, um, we know that at time 0, the displacement was 0 0.1. And so what we can do is substitute, uh, we get something like this, 0 0.1 now instead of x is equal to a e to the minus 2, uh, 0, because time is 0, and similarly plus b e to the minus 3, 0. Well, anything raised to the power 0 is 1, and so both of these exponential terms are just 1, or we can just remove them, and so we're left uh, with 0 0.1 is equal to a plus b. So we have an expression here in terms of a and b, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't find out what a and b are equal to. Um, in order to do that, we're going to have to differentiate our general solution as well, just like in our previous examples. And so we had uh, our, our, our general solution in the form x equals a e to the minus 2t plus b e to the minus 3t. And differentiating that, we now have dx by dt. And that's equal to minus 2a e to the minus 2t, minus 3b, e to the minus 3t. And again, returning to those initial conditions, we were told that at time 
t equals zero, the velocity dx by dt is equal to 0.15. And so we can say here, uh, 0.15 is equal to minus two a e to the minus two times zero, minus three b e to the minus three times zero. And again, those e to the power zero terms are going to disappear. We're left with 0.15 is equal to minus 2a minus 3b. And similarly, we could, we could rearrange slightly to say that 2a plus 3b is equal to minus 0.15. So now we have two simultaneous equations in terms of a and b. Either of these equations on their own doesn't uh, tell us what the value of a or b is, but together we can solve... Um, to find the values of A and B. Um, we'll not go through the steps of, of solving, but you can do that yourself either by substitution or elimination or some other computational method. But we find that A is 0 0.45 and B is minus 0 0.35. And we can substitute these values back into our general solution to find our particular solution. And so the particular solution in this instance is going to be x equals 0.45 e to the minus 2t minus 0.35 e to the minus 3t. So out of interest we can plot this function to show the displacement with respect to time. Let's suppose that, that a car has gone over a speed bump or something like that at time equals zero and we see that the suspension is um, displaced initially by 0 0.1 and very rapidly it returns to its equilibrium position um, and settles it at, at zero over time. Uh, we can only show that really by solving our equation here uh, for x in terms of t. So I hope this second example has been useful in how we can apply second order differential equations in a simple mechanical system like this. In our third example, we're also going to look at an electrical or electronic example um, involving second order differential equations as well.